Hi, welcome to Point Power, my name is Matt. I know that's still. Um, today I just wanted to go over a few things that um, some people are having problems with doing and also understanding. Um, and it's one of my favourite subjects, which is gears. Um, so basically, this is a, to start the example off, here's a um, 125, I think. God knows. It's been a long day. Um, this is a uh, Hyper 2 Piaggio engine. Um, it's a disc brake rear, which is a bit bigger, which I didn't know until someone pointed out to me. Um, and one of the problems people have is they get all these screws undone and then they can't get this cover off, the transmission cover off. So I just thought I'd show you quickly and then we can actually crack on with the gears. But I thought I'd start off with this because some people have trouble with this. What you need is a hammer and another hammer. Um, if you have soft handled hammers or wooden hammers, they're the best kind of things. And what you can do is you can lay them across the casing and the wood or the plastic or whatever you want actually damage your casings. Um, what they have, and I'll try and tilt it to show you better, is they have one, two, three little tabs. Now the actual mating surface, if you start to prise it apart, never stick a screwdriver, pry bar, whatever. Just like in another video that you might have seen, you shouldn't really use screwdrivers to pry, but I'm a bugger for it. Um, you should use pry bars. Um, I've got some about, but pff, sod looking for them. So basically, what you do is you stick your handle in here, and you stick your, your, your pry bar or your screwdriver, and then you just tap the back end. And what you need to do is, this one, at the back, right there at the back, it's pretty useless, I don't know why they put it in, unless you've got a hole in there, it's uh, not the best help in the world. You can pry a little, the other one, um, you can use webs, part of the casing webs, you're not meant to go metal, just little taps there, little tap there, like I say, don't go metal, and if you feel like you have to give it a good whack, use something instead of just pressing steel against the webs because you might break a web off and then you won't be happy. Little prize. Leave yourself just a little tap like that. Like I say, watch out for the edges. Now I can see a gap forming and I can just get a screwdriver in there. Don't do that, you'll knacker the main surfaces and you'll leak oil everywhere. And once you get oil on your clutch and your uh, drive belt, you'll be having loads and loads of fun. Because you won't be going anywhere. And you'll burn out your gears. Right there. If I'm about to pry there, I've got this on the edge. And I actually need to give this a bit of a whack. So I'm going to use something. A block of wood or something like that. Let's give it a whack. It's not rocket science. You just got to finesse it. Get your fingers in, and there you go. Plop, just like that. What you're trying to do is, when you're trying to pull this off, is find something to prop this up with. All right now she's propped up. When you're prying this apart, what you're trying to overcome is you're trying to overcome quite a few things. Um, there's the two location dowels either side that go there and there. You're trying to prise these two apart, but not only that is, this is an engine that's, I bought this off somewhere, it's been sat in someone's garden for bloody heaven, it's absolutely covered in shite. Um, but what you have is, you have also your input shaft, which your uh, clutch bell and your clutch attaches to, that has um, a shaft that sits, it's not exactly a, a bushing, but uh, it kind of acts like one, and then you've got this recess for a bushing and this one here and then you've got this gear and this gear now these are just fits they're not press fits but they are rammed in there so you're trying to overcome the friction and the suction that's why there's these little grooves in either side so one oil can get in there but number two is so that you could get the bugger out because if it was um, an absolute true fit then you'd be in a lot of problems you never get the bugger out what you do have to pay attention for is in here you can see this circlip 
and this circle is starting to bow out and the bearing has got is, is actually slightly proud which means that this has probably had a bit of a bray in and you can hear that it's not in the best condition anyway so what we're trying to get to is we're trying to get to gears how gears work what gears are used for because um, people keep on saying oh if I put a 44 tooth in etc etc it's not the end of the world gears are pretty simple to understand they are just circles and you could do it with your fingers um, there's a very good old video from the 1960s on YouTube about differentials and it shows you a very good example I might even put a link in the description it shows you a very good example of how a basic shaft with just four prongs sticking out of it interact with each other and how a differential works it's a pretty cool video and they got it bang on right the first time um, anyway so you have your input shaft and you have a small tooth gear here and then you have an intermediate shaft, uh, intermediate gear, and then you have your output shaft. Now, the whole reason why we do this is if you've got an engine screaming at 10,000 RPM, your rear wheel is not only screaming at 10,000 RPM. You can work out the circumference of your wheel, and you can work out how fast, if it was just running straight off the crank, 10,000 RPM would be in meters per second or miles per hour or whatever you want. Um, I might actually even work it out and. Uh, do a little video on that or something like that, or maybe just put it in the description or an update on the Facebook page or something like that. But basically what you need to do is you need to slow this speed of um, what the, the crankshaft produces down so it's manageable for the wheel to handle. The other thing is as well is that also has so many benefits, it also increases torque and I'll get to that in a minute about how gears increase torque. Um, and it, 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 in a sense it's power distribution, if you can have 20 power strokes per or 20 revolutions 20 revs per one revolution of the wheel then you've got 20 power strokes um, per the one of the wheel if you you know if you get your engine to go even faster you do you know a thousand power strokes per rev then the rear wheel if it's turning you know a thousand times slower that means one rev is getting a thousand power strokes it's distributing that power that the engine is creating um, in a sense you could work out to degrees you got one power stroke to one rotation um, it's exactly like push bikes, push bikes is a brilliant example um, you know you put it in 21st gear, high gear you've got to try and set off and it's an absolute sod you put it in first gear and all that's doing is changing the relationship between how much power you're putting into how much is and what distribution that is handed over to the rear wheel so, and it's exactly the same thing here so these things you know 10,000 rpm the rear wheel won't be screaming at 10,000 rpm because it won't there's too much resistance friction the weight of the bike etc etc so basically your input shaft um, its teeth are helical teeth they are tapered they are quieter uh, straight cut spur gears um, or straight cut teeth are uh, a bit noisier it's all to do with contact pressure, but that's a more advanced video, and we'll get onto that later on. So your input shaft sits against this intermediate shaft. This intermediate shaft um, is there because it need again it needs the gear reduction. You'd have a massive gearbox if you were going straight from input to output. Um, this just pulls out, and again you have um, which way are we going? That way. So when you put it all together, on the opposite side so you can see, you have your input shaft. And as you see, I'm spinning this loads just to turn this once. And what I'll do is I'll put a dot on it. I'll put a dot on each one so you can see the relationship between gears. And the torque increase comes from um, the distribution of power I was banging on about. I turn that there, put that there. Right, so what you've got is you've got a dot there on your input shaft and a dot on your intermediate. So if I turn this completely once back to where it was, she's only gone a third the way around, and then we do it again, 
and then we do it again. So we are three, three and a half approximately. If you count the teeth and divide them against each other, so if you've got 20 teeth and you divide it against 40, you'll get two, so it's two to one. Um, so we'll call this three and a half just for the sake of it. I'll count them later and tell you what they are. Um, but yeah, so there's three input, three and a half input rotations per one of the intermediate shaft. Right then, so I cheated. <laughs> I stopped the camera and counted the teeth. Sorry, that's my coffee. Um, so um, there's 13 teeth on the input. The intermediate outer is 46, the intermediate inner is 13, and the large um, output shaft gear is 47 teeth. So, when you actually do the maths, all you do is you get the intermediate here, this is 46, and you get 13. So you get 46 and you divide it by 13. That's all you do, get your calculator out, do it in your head, whatever. It turns out to be, because I've done on the calculator, I cheated, it turns out to be 3.538. So it's three and a half and a tiny bit. And the, the, basically we could see that. We could see that it was just over three and a half when we turned them dot to dot. Um, so basically what that means is that if this shaft is going 10,000 RPM, then this is going 3.5 times slower, or 10,000 divided by 3.538, which I didn't do on the calculator and I'm not gonna bother. But it's, you know, it's 3.5 is nearly 3.3, so it's a third. So if you're running this at, uh, let's just make it easy, 9,000 RPM, then this is turning at 3,000 RPM, straight away, just like that, it's a third. It's changing the speed. But you're also increasing the amount of power strokes per rotation when you stop it, wherever you want to stop it. So if we're going at 9,000 RPM, because that's nice and easy, if we're going at 9,000 RPM, this intermediate shaft, in a sense, is seeing 9,000 power strokes per rep. Um, per minute um, but this gear is being fed for it to turn at 9,000 rpm after it's done 9,000 not 9,000 rpm after it's done 9,000 revolutions or after it's done 3,000 revolutions that's more like it if it's done 3,000 revolutions it's seen or it, it's had 9,000 power strokes transferred to it so as you can see it's, it's distributing or it's um increasing the amount of power that's going through it per rotation um, per minute so again we're stepping down again so this intermediate shaft because it's all one complete shaft the rpm just say we're going 9000 on the input we're going 3000 here so this entire unit this entire unit is spinning at 3000 rpm so that means that when it gets to the output shaft you get your 13 teeth because they're the only teeth that are touching. So these teeth, these input shaft teeth here, these 13 teeth are going at 3000 RPM. And then it gets to your output shaft and again that's 47 teeth. So if we divide the two you get 3.615 um, between each other. Not between the big one and this, the output shaft, but the little one. It's what gears are engaged. If it's on the same shaft they're rotating at the same speed. So this shaft's doing 3000 RPM, so this shaft will reduce it yet again, pretty much by a third again. So you get 1000 RPM. So if your engine is doing 9000 RPM, your rear wheel is approximately doing, and you're clutching obviously everything's engaged, you're already moving, but if you're reading 9000 RPM on your uh, tachometer, it's pretty close that your rear wheel will be doing 1000 RPM. And if your wheel is a metre in circumference, then you are doing a thousand metres a minute, which means that you are doing 60 kilometres an hour. It is as simple as that. That's when I do my nice 9,000 <laughs> 9, revs, easy maths. You know, it gets more complicated, then you've got loss of grip through your tyre, etc, etc, belt slip, all that rubbish. But, in the ideal perfect world. But that's all basically what gears are doing. So if you change your gears out, if you go for a bigger in if you go for a bigger input and a smaller intermediate shaft because they have to sit because the shafts have to stay in the same place if one gets bigger the other one has to get smaller and vice versa and it's exactly the same as 
uh, changing rear sprockets on or front front and rear sprockets on um, an off-road bike. It's the same as changing sprockets on a push bike. If you've got a BMX, people change sprockets quite often, change sizes, which will give you. And again, it's always a trade-off. You either get really quick acceleration, but you lose your top end, your top speed, or you go for top speed and you lose your acceleration. The really you can't have both um, with the same engine. If you had exactly the same engine, you can't have shit hot acceleration and shit hot top speed. It's got to be one or the other with the same engine. If you start really, you know, if you increase the power, uh, get a kit, well, it's not the same engine, then you're changing stuff out. But if you keep the same engine, just with gearing and all the rest of it, that's all you're going to get. Obviously, changing rollers and all the rest of it, that's not increasing the speed of something so much that's increasing the efficiency of how it's working basically means the standard kit versus your sexy variator and all the rest of it your variator is making more of the power that's already there it's it's, it's increasing the efficiency not increasing the overall power output of the engine um, and basically that's simply it so you need to as long as you know the basic maths and like what I've told you it's counting teeth counting teeth is exactly how it works Cutting and designing gears is a bit different, you know, you, you've got to get um, into pitch and pressure angles and all the rest of it, but if you're just putting, if you're looking on online about buying a gear up kit or something like that, you know, you can sit there and do the maths yourself. If you are, if you want more top speed, then you've got to reduce your gear size, but it depends where, and if you know, like I've just, you know, in the simplest way explained, um, counting the number of teeth and doing your divisions and all the rest of it, then you can work it out yourself, it's pretty easy. There's no real science to it or wizardry. The only thing I will say is that um, helical gears, angled gears, these teeth, you see these teeth aren't straight, uh, they're slightly spiralled. It's helical gears. Helical gears are choir and straight tooth gears are noisy as hell. Um, if that doesn't bother you and you just want to rip around on a thing, then do your quick sums and work out what you... You want to find out what you've got initially, if it's an Aerox, if it's anything else like that. It depends what um, ratios that they use for the standard. But you count your standard, and if you want to go up in acceleration, you work that out. If you want to go top speed, you work that out. Gearing up kits just for the sake of it, it it's pointless unless you've got a name for doing it. it. You're just wasting your money. The other thing is, as well, is that... Um, People get like big boss 70, 80 cc kits and all the rest of it. Um, they seem to be hell bent on getting gear up kits. You only need a gear up kit if you are revving the crap out of it and it's coming to its last legs. If you want to think about it like this, it's like being in second gear on a push bike on a 20, you know, a 21 speed push bike. If you're in second gear, you can't go fast. You are pedaling like an idiot and you're not really going anywhere. Again, because that's because the ratios. Um, like I said, it's you know your nine thousand to three thousand to one thousand. Um, you are pedalling so quickly that the engine is just spinning itself into a grave. It's like been in second gear. Um, some people, you know, if you if your engine isn't tuned well enough or your big bore kit or whatever isn't really one of the top notch ones and producing lot, a lot more power. If you just stick a gear up kit in there, all you're going to do is you like sticking it in 21st gear and trying to set off. It's pretty much as simple as that. You are um, distributing, you're not distributing the amount of power strokes per revolution of each gear type thing. So your engine will get bogged down at 7,000 RPM while, you're in, while your rear wheel's trying to turn at 2,000. It's a balancing act. But if you do the basic maths, you get to feel it, you know, you get you get on a pedal, you get on a bike or whatever, and you can feel if it's running out of chuff. Not the engine, the engine's screaming. You can tell if the gears, there just isn't enough momentum, um, enough gear in, a gear in there. So, that's gears, that's how to get this off um, without breaking anything, and that's a simple explanation on gears. So, see you in a bit.